Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, what on earth is AEW thinking? They have controversially rehired a, a very interesting person. Yes, the major name has joined AEW Creative. We've got an update on a major bloodline plan for Money in the Bank. And a backstage update on the Night of Champions main event. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. All right, so you know how yesterday we sat here and we covered a bunch of stuff on various big situations in AEW, including Ace Steel. And we sat here and we said, Why, what, what's going on? Why is this a hill to die on? Why yes. is Ace Steel, Ace Steel who literally bit a man, what's going Why? Why is he part of negotiations to bring CM Punk back? A Steel's already back. <laughs> this is a report from uh, House of Wrestling. Shouts to Nick Hausman, uh, who you might remember from CM Punk shouting at him. Near yeah, enough, kind of walked my spot there. Near enough at the 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 brawl at the conference. From Chicago, uh, Boston. Now. Yeah, shouting at him is a bit of an exaggeration, but you know this. Yeah. Um, he came through with this pretty comprehensive report yesterday. Actually, it's really good work. Um, Kind of contextualizes the whole situation, noting, of course, that Steele was let go after a brawl out, where he's alleged to have bit Kenny Omega as part of that fight. He was a coach slash producer slash agent thing, a backstage thing. But uh, yeah, so he was let go at that time, but AW actually uh, rehired him soon after. Now, AW told him that he could work alongside Tony Khan in some kind of creative capacity, okay. um, but certain talent would be upset if he was backstage understandably so and as a result he has been working remotely okay uh now interestingly house of wrestling also notes that there was an understanding that once collision kicked off steel would be brought back to the road at okay. some stage right but that changed on tuesday when it was communicated or decided that ace wouldn't be allowed to attend shows after all uh leading to a miscommunication between lawyers which then led to CM Punk being pulled from the collision oh, materials, goodness. which we discussed as well. Now, despite this, House of Wrestling notes that uh, CM Punk remains with AEW, he is motivated, uh, and he wants to help the promotion grow, maintaining a sound relationship with Tony Khan. Um, Punk and Khan have no issues at the moment, but this A Steel thing is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Um, is he the greatest agent of all time because if he was i could I, and he might be we don't know we're not backstage you could understand why you might do a little bit more for him than you would for the worst agent of all time i don't know who that is road dog let's say easy target um but I, why would you bring back someone so secretly who had such a controversial role yeah and whatever else i i fundamentally do not understand this move uh, on AEW's behalf. I do not understand why you would promise or, or come to an understanding you'll be back on the road and then why would you make that promise if if you know it's going to cause problems? And, and then... they, they, there is, you know, supposedly meant to be some fluidity between shows so the chances are that some members of the elite might show up on collision. Yeah, it's... And then that's the difficulty of like, we don't need you this week, Ace. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say the names involved but there is... A parallel, because it would be a bit melodramatic, but there is definitely a parallel here between this and a certain thing that TNA did many moons ago. Yeah, that's a with good a point. With a secret backstage return. Um, that caused some problems. Shark Boy, of course. Oh, obviously. That, you can't trust a shark, man. You can't trust a shark. But yeah, th this is extremely strange to me. Um, obviously, I hope that it works out for the better. We'll see. For me, Ace Steel is the best agent of all time. Best, <laughs> best agent of chaos, that is. Of course. Because this is insane. I, I completely agree with what you said, Andy, because like, if you want to bring him back because you, you really value his input, fair enough. Maybe he's the sort of calming influence on Tony for his wacky ideas or whatever it may be. And you have him work remotely and that's kind of a thing. But yeah, working re remotely is good and all, but like a bit like during the Pando, I just bloody love being in the office with the boys. So don't then say, oh, don't worry, by the time Collision comes around, which will be like halfway through yeah. next year yeah. or whatever, however this, this conversation went down, we'll have, you know, sorted it all out, flattened the beef or whatever the phrase is, and, and we can move <laughs> on from there. And uh, yeah, like you say, it just, it, it, it does feel like, whether it's a miscommunication or if it's, you know, people just getting, just overreacting to the news, Promising something and then yeah. last minute going, no, actually, we're not going to do that. With the with the characters involved, I'm being very very diplomatic here. It's understandable why people might blow up at that. Yeah, I generally like to give people the benefit of the doubt, 
I like to see the good in people, unless they're like Vince McMahon or Hulk Hogan. Um, <laughs> I just don't see the benefit of this, generally. Let us know down below. What do you think of this whole thing? What's going on? I'm sure there'll be deal? nothing more to talk about this in the coming days as we head to next week's big announcement on AEW Dynamite. Yeah. Hey, maybe it'll be another big announcement next week. <laughs> I'd love that if you just kept it rolling forever. That's how you do it. Announcements maybe. every Wednesday. New, <laughs> new name for AEW. Uh, but speaking of people joining teams or being rehired, not rehired, we've just actually transitioned back onto AEW's creative team. A major name's joined. Uh, if you've been wondering what Daniel Bryan's been up to since he left WWE, he's just joined uh, AEW Creative under his pseudonym. Brian Danielson. Uh, this is according to Fightful Select. He's uh, going to be on the creative team for Collision ahead of its upcoming launch on June 17th. Yes. Yes. It's the day before Mrs. H. Murray's birthday. Ah. Respect. There Hope you go. she has a good, good one. I'm going to be tired after the show. Um, but we're going to go for a cake, probably. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, AW yet to confirm where that's coming from, of course. It's on Dynamite next week. Uh, he's previously worked on uh, WWE Creative, which drew the American Dragon plaudits from those he worked with, uh, particularly for his demeanor. So the full creative team currently comprises of Tony Khan, brilliant Will Washington, who's just joined. Congratulations again to him. Sanjay Dutt, QT Marshall, um, whilst Joe Lynn, Dean Malenko, and Christopher Daniels all have roles as well. Here Many comes of Joe Lynn. Many of AEW's top stars, granted a say, of course, on their own storylines. Um, yeah, what a great wrestling mind to have on the creative team. Definitely, and look, Danielson's never been shy of like talking about like retirement and stuff, uh, and like he, stepping away sooner rather than later. He's a family man. He's beaten up. Uh, he's very. He's always been very open about these topics. So theoretically, um, if he starts working in AEW Creative, as he did a little bit in WWE towards the end of his run, it's a nice like ease of passage. Yeah. I'm not saying that he's retiring tomorrow or any nonsense like that, but he's got the experience and he'll do a good job. Obviously, he's one of the greatest wrestlers ever as yeah. well. So that adds. Yeah, that's the only difficulty, isn't it? It's like when you hear about like Roy Keane taking charge of a lower league team like Sunderland or something, yeah. right? <laughs> Where he'll go, go and, why can't you just do this in training? And they're like, because we're not you, Brian yeah. Danielson. Yeah, it's the same when Derek McInnes managed Aberdeen, man. Exactly. It's the all-timer. Um, Danielson recently said like he's really injured. Like he hasn't wrestled since. Yeah, I was going to say he's missing, but he's yeah. going to do Anik in the arena. He, he is. Yeah. He is brave. Uh, he said like welcome he, back. He can only lift his one of his arms up a certain degree, and he's got like pains in his leg. He's got like he's got a bunch of injuries and stuff. That's he's beaten up. That's why he's not been wrestling at the moment. I like to think he's resting himself. Yes. But like getting involved on the creative side keeps him busy. So I think it's yeah. uh, it's it like this is just a nice thing. Anytime Danielson steps away from the ring to recover from an injury, you always assume the worst. Yeah. But I think this is more of a precautionary measure, fingers crossed. I like these two stories here. Weird hire, great hire. They kind of balance themselves It's out, very AEW, they? isn't it? It's great, man. I love it. I love how wild and chaotic and weird AEW is. It's why it's my favourite American Someone promotion. make that Oprah Winfrey <laughs> gif. You get a job. You get a job. You get a job. <laughs> it's, it's bloody... I almost swore there. I almost said it. Save that for later. Effing awesome. It is flipping awesome. Flipping fiend. Uh, right, we got a major money in the bank match being discussed. Yes, please. Bloodline, bloodline, bloodline. Come on! It's Urkt Wrestling coming through, reporting that... Uh, plans are still taking shape, but one idea discussed for Money in the Bank is Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa versus the Usos. Don't know why I said that. Freeing up Roman for a title defense at SummerSlam. Cool. Looks like the bloodline separation, alienation, space station is going to keep growing and going and, and flowing until we get to Money in the Bank in London. Uh, oh, yeah. What do you think? I'm giddy. It's all coming together. Like I said, I always have to preface this. They should have put the title on Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. They've done it now for the haven't they? The next yeah. best option is apparently what they're doing right now. I am still 100% invested. If anyone listens to the uh, SmackDown preview and review podcast and the Raw review and preview podcast, what culture wrestling, wherever you get your podcast from, you will know I am still a staunch defender of this storyline. I'm still into it. I'm loving watching this disintegration. Um, Roman and Solo obviously fighting for the tag titles at Night of Champions. Maybe this is going to have something to do with it. Brilliant, further the blow off, further the separation, the split at Money in the Bank. And then I want Roman going into SummerSlam against Money in the Bank winner Cody Rhodes for the titles with the bloodline disintegrated. Maybe no one with him. I was going to say Paul Heyman, but maybe even Paul Heyman goes, yeah, I'm going to go with Solo, a kind of, a, you know, like exactly what they've, well, they haven't done it yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. But when Don Callis reveals that he's 
latched on to Will Ospreay now after leaving Kenny Omega. It's a, akin to that, I suppose. Mm. I love it. It's good. It's a good story, man. And it will have a fun match, and we'll all be happy. Okay, let's move on I'm, to... Where are WWE shills? Any WWE are. shills on the same video. Two what watches. Is going on? Oh, no, yeah. It's right. like, you know, you can like two things at once, man. I've always said that. You can like trains and buses. And you can like the only two wrestling companies that exist. Uh, should we move on to Knock? Yeah. Because we are knock, knock, knocking on Saudi's door. Um, talk about Night of Champions. This is according to... Look, 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 look. Boozer. <laughs> They've come with some good reports recently. So hey, they've them. been killing it. They've been killing it. Three main events. That doesn't make sense, but three huge matches basically set for Night of Champions. Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles for the inaugural World Heavyweight Championship. As I mentioned, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns and Solos for all the tag belts. And of course, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar in a match that they seemingly intimated would be like a street fight. Yeah, uh, something. A Saudi street fight or something like that. Um, but in terms of the main event, it is probably going to be Rollins versus Styles for that new big gold belt. Uh, there are also reports of potentially United States Championship match being added to the card, of course. Um, it's a bit of a quiet weekend, that, isn't it, really? Yeah. United Champions, double or nothing, and NXT Battlegrounded. Uh, you grounded! Uh, like Battlegrounded! But mom! I like how you listed the shows in order of size there yeah. as well. Very big, good. Biggest show last. Biggest show of the week. <laughs> uh, there'll be 40,000 people there. Yeah, it should be the headliner, Seth versus uh, versus AJ. It's for a brand new belt. Uh, I'm in favor of it. There you go. And we're going. Well, we're not, but... We're going to Night of Champions. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, no, uh, Phil, Simon, and the Dadleys are going to Double or Nothing. They'll be flying out there midway Tuesday. through next week. Um, try and spot them at Dynamite and, and say hello them. to them. And yeah, really pester them. Really annoy them. <laughs> Bring <laughs> Sidgwick some American beans. Do they have baked beans? Of course they have baked beans over Do they? there. Yeah, it's they not quite like the, the British. Like in the British section. I think so. I think so. It's like an inflated price. Yeah. yeah. You know, Andy, that's a bit of a weird question. Oh, sorry. What are your thoughts on the Night of Champions main event? Good stuff? Cool. Yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> it's been a good match. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a weird question, that, Andy. Yeah. Speaking of weird questions. <laughs> If it didn't work the first time, do it again. Just, just my second rule of I'll just force it. Yeah. Um, thanks to everyone on the YouTube community page for sending us the wacky questions. And thankfully now, uh, the <laughs> very hungry caterpillar is not going to... What did he threaten to? Eat you? Eat yeah. Yeah. Everyone on Twitter who sent me questions, I'll get to you next week. Yeah, don't worry. Community today. Um, Donk T starts us off. This was very upvoted in terms of the... Donk or liked tea. in terms of our questions. Okay. Put the rock in a freezer, would he become stone cold? <laughs> Solid start, Donk T. Also, shout out to Booby Fish, who said, I doubt they will uh, undertake uh, this question. And I'll show you, Booby Fish. <laughs> That is the and dumbest. Folks, who is today? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and yet is the best thing I've heard all week. Respect. I mean, folks, where's the boobs? Second question <laughs> comes from John Harrison. You heard me exclaim in the office this morning. What a question that John is, John Harrison. Harrison Multi-platform question. Back at it again. Boom. Good. That's a loyal fan. Good Respect. Friday, boys. Shut your eyes. If you were a London pigeon. Where, where, what, who would be your pooping ground? Have a great day, peace and love. Okay, why am I closing my eyes? Just picture it to, to embody to a picture pigeon. Picture it, pick, all right. Pick, put yourself in the body of a pigeon. Where, why, and who? I, I'll, I'll put the nice, I'll do the sound effects for you that I'm a fellow pigeon near you. Ooh. All right, so I'm hanging out, I'm a pigeon. I'm Ooh. at the Houses of Parliament. Oh. I'm at the Houses of Parliament. Where are you at, Prime Minister? Oh, Rishi. You're getting it, you're getting the, the pigeon. Poo. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, it's an easy choice, man. Like, if, if, if I, I, whatever. He, he runs the country. He's a billionaire. He can get the poo. I've always wanted to shit on a city slicker. <laughs> do they work in the shard? It looks like a fancy place. Yeah, I'd probably do that. Getting well. on your suit. <laughs> Someone walking around Borough Market, spending 20 pounds on some pasta for lunch. Ah, uh ah, -uh, here it comes. Eat it. Eat the pigeon. Pigeons rock, man. I love pigeons. What are your thoughts on Kitty Wakes? Kitty Wakes, terrible. I'm a murderer of Kitty Wakes. <laughs> if you ever see any blood in Newcastle, it's... I got them. Uh, El Shaw. They, just, they sh everywhere, man. <laughs> like, the, the whole city. <laughs> We've opened the door, Ben. The Robbie. whole city of Newcastle in the summer stinks yeah. of 
flipping kitty week, but it's horrible. Yeah, there's that lovely, was it the Baltic flour mill? Yeah. And it's just, that's there. And there's like a bit under Time Bridge, which is like one of oh. the nicest parts of Keystone. Yeah. The ground is literally like two layers like of lines. dirt. And then like the bits the people have been walking through, it's disgusting. I know they're a protected species. I'm not saying call them. And I was joking when I say I murder them. It just but, punches them a bit. Yeah, but can we not like enslave them or something? Like <laughs> enslave the kitty wakes. Nobody needs these flying rats. Ooh. Keep them alive. Just put them in a cage in a bin. I don't know. <laughs> enslave the kitty wakes. We can have them do our bidding. I don't know. What would a kitty wake do? Or like a, you could be, it could be like a, you know, like a dog sled, but with a load of kitty wakes. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know what these are, they're like, they're just crap seagulls. Yeah, and obviously, I, we shouldn't have to say this, it's obviously a joke. Don't be cruel to animals. Yeah, You're like, an arsehole if you are. I'm not, you don't do anything to the kitty wigs, but I do wish they didn't smell as much. Yeah, exactly. Eat, eat, a, eat like pineapple, oh, that, that makes things... Wait different. until you see Aberdeen seagulls, brother. That's a different level. Yeah, they eat. Yeah, different level. Oh, I talked. That's Glaswegian. Uh, L. Sean <laughs> Writes, hello dad to be, Adam, thank you, and metal music connoisseur Andy. All right. He's combining the two I worlds. It. What children's song would you turn into a hard metal song? Oh, jeezy peeps, man. I, uh, ugh. I, ugh. Kid songs? Yeah. Itsy Wincy Spider went up the fucking spout. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I have no idea. What about, like, uh, Let It Go from Frozen? Oh, yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. There is so much fucking snow. <laughs> uh, uh, two swears each. We get one more. One more each, okay? I don't Mary? have much of a growl, unfortunately, so I had to go right up to the. Let go. Let all Let all You got to do, <laughs> do it from the pit of your stomach. You got to breathe through your diagram. I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> diagram? Diaphragm. I had like two vocal lessons when I was like 20. <laughs> and that, that's the one thing, I, the diaphragm breathing, and that's how you get the. <laughs> but I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I like that. that was I love, great. I love, I love that. That style of vocals is so fun though, because there's so many people who have like, over the years, who've like learned techniques, so it doesn't like mess them up and all this stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then like I watched an interview with a band, uh, King Nine, I think it was the other week. It's uh, a relatively the, normal name the, for the, the bands you like. Well, like, and the vocalist is like a, a monster of a man. He's like giant, Brody King. Uh, yeah, but yeah, not quite as like mountainous well, as Brody no King. One else, he, no one he, is. He, he's a beast of a man, and he's a terrifying stage presence of vocalist. And he was like, yeah, I just started shouting his stuff. Really, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, uh, I think it was the interview with Robbie Fox. Shout out to Robbie. Hey. Um, and yeah, I, I love it. The difference is is fascinating to me. To me, the more compelling one is the guy who just shouts stuff. Yeah. This is the best. What's the name of the Butcher's old band? I want to give them a Every shout. Every time I die, respect. Chat One of the all time greats. Um, Chris Taney continues. Good day, legends. How's your golf game? Just a, is that a, it? That's the simple question. I played golf until I was about 18. Did you? When I moved into, t to, into the city. Kind of gave it up after that because I was going to university and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I was pretty good, honestly. Like, I bet you weren't expecting a sincere answer to this. I was no, all right. I mean, I was intrigued. My handicap peaked at 18. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Used to play with my dad all the time. Used That's to get cool. lessons. I, li I grew up in a small village in Aberdeenshire. Not much to do. Learn how to play golf. Played from about five to 18. I was all right. I've also decided that when I'm too old to like run and stuff and play football and things, which I haven't done in years, but I'm going to take it up, take it up again. Yeah. So, earnest answer, you weren't expecting that. I want another work trip to the uh, the dinosaur golf. Oh, that was fun. You know what we need? We need we need a Newcastle top golf. Yeah. Have you seen this before? Yeah. It's amazing. It was great as well because we played it in Florida on my holiday last year. No one cares, but we did. And uh, it was my whole family. My dad and my sister still play, and I whooped their asses. <laughs> they were absolutely raging. I am I'm quietly confident when it comes to mini golf. When it comes to actual golf, I don't think I've ever played a hole of golf, it's, let alone 18. It's so precise. I went to the driving range, I remember, me and, me and my housemate at the time, Chad Sparky, and uh, we were just like, oh, let's go to driving range and knock some balls about that, that'd be fun. <laughs> I uh, missed the ball for two hours. And I just got blisters on my hand, and I was like, What's "And going then on you here? do hit it, and it goes like ten meters." Yeah, like, everyone else like, is like Tiger Woods. There's there. a real technique to it, and I respect it. I especially respect the Americans in Florida who play golf, and there's just alligators yeah. walking around. <laughs> That's a funny little decoration. It's just moved once. Yeah. Yeah. Like this uh, one in the background. Twirled and what? Lovely. Serving. <laughs> and there's his third. <laughs> Twirled edge. Right, it's morning, Mr. Caterpie. 
All right. Have you got a third one left? Uh, yeah, I got yeah. one more. Sick. One more in the chamber. If you were also a very hungry caterpillar, what would be the first five things you'd devour, oh. starting from the smallest to the largest, of course? Oh, man. So should we alternate? Yeah, let's do it. Bounce back and forth. Um, so is this stuff, you can eat anything? Anything, I think. The very the hungry caterpillar does not care if it's no. digestible or not. Uh, I am starting off then. No, I'll let you start off. That's what I'll do. Okay, we'll start off small. We'll start off small. Um, I've always wanted to suck on a marble. A marble? Don't do it, kids. Marble. But All right. The big ones, you know, with the little widge inside. Okay. It's like clear, but it's got like a in the well, middle. Well, the, the, the question was we have to go up in size. I yeah. was going to say right back spring, but I can't do that now that you've mentioned the large marbles. So. Hey, he's tweeting. Yeah, I was going to be using for today's <laughs> and finally, and then I remembered I couldn't bring up his tweets. So. There you go. I wonder why. Uh, okay, so we've got a marble that's gone. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to go with a Greg's sausage roll because you need some sausage okay, to get yeah. through this. Okay, so that's sort of like that big. Yeah. So we want to go... Uh, what are we talking? What are we talking? Larry? <laughs> Your move, Andy Murray. You can't eat Larry. He's a tasty boy. Oh, well, if we're in that, if we're in that topic... He's very hungry, Andy. If, if, if we're in that topic, the caterpillar's name is Chris and he is eating Kenny Omega. Wow, okay. It's uh, kind of almost uh, deep cut. It's I not think really. going to have words with this yeah. uh, very hungry caterpillar. He's Chris and he is a guy. Also, that's going to be an awkward meeting in the very hungry caterpillar's stomach, yeah. isn't it? Kenny Omega playing marbles with Ryback's brain and a sausage roll. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> Kenny Omega <laughs> to... Um, hmm. What can we have instead of <laughs> Kenny Omega? I've always wanted to know what he tastes like. Mr. Blobby. Oh, the Blobster. He'd put the hungry caterpillar out of business, him. <laughs> Gee whiz. That'd be you for the weekend. God. Anyway. Uh, and finally, uh, I, I, this caught my eye because uh, Nerdbox, who was on yesterday, made this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a sneak peek as to what my child is apparently going to look like. Please, Born with glasses. Please no one show that to my wife. Uh, Morning Legends. It's a question as well. Um, the burning question we need to know the answer to is this. What entrance music will we be playing for little Adam Wilborn when he's born into this world? Can we get a shout out from the King of the Mic too? One second. Ah, my fucking ankle, I forgot I'd hurt it. <laughs> oh, should I get it out? No, I shouldn't. People nope, probably eat nope. it. Nerd box. Ooh! Shout entrance out to you. music for the baby. Oh, man. Uh, I've got a plan, by the way, for this. I can, uh, spoilers. Aunt Louise doesn't know about this. No, you, you could tell me yours. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I am hell by Machine Head. Because it's going to chaos your life. That's mean. I'm sorry. Um, it's true. No more Mr. Nice I know what guy I'm getting into. Oh, Alice yeah. Alice Cooper. There you go. I'm going to play the uh, Bloodline, uh, Roman Reigns' Bloodlines music. And I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I'm helping no one. And I'll be like, hold my hand. I'll be like, no. This hand's only doing one thing. It's doing that. And then the <laughs> moment it comes out, Mr. Wilborn, you're the father to a baby boy. Hopefully it all goes well. Fingers crossed, everybody. Uh, would you like to hold baby? And I go, no, just hold it in front of me. And I hold the baby in front of me and I'm going to go, ACKNOWLEDGE ME! <laughs> is there a... Is there, is there music playing when the chief lifts up Simba in The Lion King? Yeah. That could be the music. It's the... Take away! There you go. There you go. You can say, uh... <laughs> I can love the Lion King. If you could fight a Lion King character, who would it be? Ooh. Timon. Snap him in half. Easy. Oh. Easy win. Pumbaa would F you up. I would. I mean, it's, it's, Scar's a bad dude. Scar's a prick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Randy Orton punt his fucking head off. <laughs> yes. But yeah. then again, actually, yeah, I'll beat up Scar and then I get all the hyenas to come with me because they Gang. love my jokes. Gang member. <laughs> me and Rafiki are rolling deep as well. Oh, uh, yeah. It's going to be great. We're gonna we're gonna take care yeah, of. Yeah, I'd love to go for a night out with Rafiki. Yeah, it'd be a good laugh. Rafiki and Pumba, man. Seth Rogen was he Pumba in the live? Oh, action? maybe. Was it? I, I he was. Uh, Seth Rogen might have been with uh, Timon and Pumba. Timon and Pumba. One it's of them. the the flipping guys. Well, one of the anyway, oh, is that it? We yeah. finished for the week. <laughs> I'm flipping done. Right. I'm done for the month. <laughs>
<laughs> like, any thoughts on everything we discussed in the comment section? Like, we talked about wrestling at some we'll point. We'll be here so. for like freaking half an hour. <laughs> uh, thoughts, Twitter questions, all that good stuff for the guys who do the news over the weekend uh, at What Culture WWE. Watch that. Follow both of us. Follow Andy Murray at at Andy H Murray. The H stands for Hakuna Matata. Oh, obviously. look at that in segue. And also happy Frozen Soul Day to those who celebrate. Ooh, follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And we have peaked. We'll see you soon. <laughs>